Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Balaz, and today I'm joined by Adriana from Starry Sky Readings. Adriana is our recently certified quantum soul guidance practitioner, and I look forward to getting to know about her own journey and her unique style of delivering galactic astrology soul readings. Welcome, Adriana. How are you today? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I, I feel so good to finally be certified. Happy to be here. So glad. You're such a diligent student, I have to say, throughout the time. I think, was it over a year um, that you've been in the course, but you've been very present. You've I know that you've been really at it and you're very consistent and the questions that you've asked really showed me how you just get it naturally and you're exploring the different charts that you went through and then eventually you found your own unique style that I love to share today in today's podcast. So kind way to learn more about your personal journey with uh, whether astrology or tarot or any other modality that you've explored that supported your expansion and then also taking a peek at your galactic astrology chart and looking at some of the gems there where would you like to start yeah we can start from just me starting from the course i mean as you know my grandmother caitlin and she's also a certified practitioner she brought the course to my awareness and it was march 2023 when i saw it i it just clicked for me and even going through the course material everything was just kind of clicking even if i had a little block of like trying to understand things more it just all fell into place it was like a puzzle and i had already known a lot about dolores cannon's work from a few years ago going through my own personal spiritual path and awakening if you want to call it that it always really resonated with me with what she spoke about with the waves of volunteers and I was like yeah that's me I'm like, that's totally who I am I chose to come here so then years later finding this course through uh, my own grandmother doing this too I just thought yes this is what I need by the way for people who might not know it you're talking about Caitlin Pendolino, her Galactic Ambassadors podcast introduction to her life journey and her style of QSG sessions is shared in the GA podcast number 66. So literally the one released before this one. That's the connection. And it's beautiful to see you two working together and also releasing uh, podcasts and conversations where you go into different details about the stars and the transits and offering two different generations perspectives. It's really such a delightful and really flowing conversation. So there's just really lovely feedback on your videos too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we, we always loved talking astrology. So this just took it to a whole other level. And we decided, yeah, let's do some podcast videos on YouTube. And we've been loving doing that. I'll backtrack a little bit about the tarot. So I went through what I would kind of call the dark night of the soul, if you're familiar with that through, um, I think Carl Jung talked about that a lot, the psychologist. So I kind of went through something like that. In 2019, I had health problems, relationship problems. It was like everything all at once. So really going through my shadow work. It was really hard, but I think it was very necessary because at the end of it, I think the end of that year, I started to find myself going back to a spiritual path that I had kind of strayed a little off from. I felt a little lost on the direction of where I wanted to go in life, but I always really gravitated towards tarot. And I always had oracle cards since I was a little girl, actually, um, but I didn't have tarot cards. But then I finally, at the end of 2019, I decided with my tarot cards that I had, I said, I'm going to do tarot readings. So I started doing that mostly actually on Fiverr um, of all the websites you could do. It seemed to work for me for some reason on there on Instagram also. So I did some things on there. It's still on there. Yeah, I think it's just one of those necessary things you know when you think of like facing your shadow side to learn and to grow so it really just put me it like forced me to get back on a spiritual path and i i always knew i i loved astrology i used to go in the library i, I used to work in the library since oh. i was 18. i used to go to the astrology section all the time <laughs> i was Good always job. I always knew I loved it and I wanted to learn more about it, but I just, for whatever reason, uh, didn't think it was something I could do because of just other things going on in my life. But I did start, yeah, doing the tarot. So I've been a tarot reader now for four years. 
And then, yeah, I've been doing astrology since last year. So I really committed to learning astrology and really understanding it. Obviously, adding the fixed star elements and the star seed stuff just really clicked for me. That's so good to see. I would love to share your chart because what you just shared is in your chart and perhaps you did you may i'm not sure if you if you've made the connections is it all right if i uh, bring it up here we're looking at the placidus house system i believe that's your preference at the moment and you have your ascendant in cancer i want to first point out the dark night of the soul that you've had so you had really challenging experience with your health and sixth house in astrology is connected to health as well as the uh, 12th house. But you have your Jupiter in sixth house in sign of Capricorn. And Jupiter is not very happy in Capricorn. It, it's um, it's falling in Capricorn. So it can trigger the challenging experience with your everyday health, especially during transits. But there is a connection between the ninth house because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and Jupiter in traditional astrology rules Pisces so they're actually in mutual reception and then also Pluto is in sign of Sagittarius which is also ruled by Jupiter so there's kind of a connection between the transformational Pluto Jupiter that brings the expansion of consciousness and growth and Saturn that teaches us so many lessons and then these three houses of health higher learning education and, and um, establishing our lives philosophy and then kind of your personal creativity see so i think all these three celestial gods worked together in your personal transformation and as you were going through the difficulty at the same time you were really advancing your view of life who you are and how you can develop yourself to then support the collective in some way and then of course your venus in aquarius in the eighth house may also bring in the connection to your love and passion for studying the esoterics, the eighth mm -hmm. house, the hidden, um, thinking about psychology and you know how things are happening behind the scenes, and Aquarius being the revolutionary and forward thinking and the un unconventional ways of of doing things. Mm -hmm. And so, I just wanted to bring out that kind of traditional part of astrology into the picture, how beautifully it played out in your life, but. Going back to the Ascendant in Cancer, first of all, when you were born, Star Sirius uh, A was rising. So it's such a, you know, we, we can uh, kind of bridge into talking about the galactic uh, connections on your soul level. So the Sirius star rising can indicate powerful uh, spiritual guidance and uh, strong connection to higher wisdom and really the most ancient wisdom, the connection to Sirius and Lyran stars, which they were setting when you were born. And um, Lyran stars are conjunct your sun and Neptune in the house of relationships. So you have these powerful spiritual stars guiding you on the horizon. And then at the deepest part of your chart, in the fourth house, on your north lunar node, you have star Arcturus and Spica, also very spiritual stars. That That is, uh, I think, very in alignment with the path you're choosing. Not only that, what I'm seeing is the star of Pegasus, Skeet, or she, Skeet, yeah, Skeet, I think most people pronounce it this way. The star of Pegasus is on your midheaven. And I think that's such a nice omen for your natural ability to bring messages of hope to your clients who may feel in despair who are really looking at the straw to grasp and get them out of of difficult challenging situations and there's something about this star whenever i see it prominent whether through mercury or midheaven uh, or any of the personal planets the people really have this natural ability to say the right words to bring hope and inspiration to uh, in times of need would you like to comment on any of this before I talk about uh, one more star that is hidden? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Actually, when when you said that about the Pegasus uh, sheet, I something I always try to do is I always try to leave my people with something positive, yeah. especially if it's a really 
uh, difficult reading. And, you know, I can really pick up on that energy and people reach out to me for certain things. But I always try to, yeah, leave them with something positive or some sort of guidance out of it. I, maybe that's just because of my, my own personal experience with it. And I can understand and relate with certain things, of course. So but yeah, I thank you for pointing that out, though, with the serious A, too, because we also have some serious alignments coming up, too, in July, which is interesting, too, coming soon at the time yeah. of recording. Definitely turn your radar on to receive whatever guidance may be there to bring further activations and initiations for you into the mysteries, cosmos. I wonder if the asteroid Chiron in Libra in your fourth house conjunct star Algorab in Corvus constellation may be influencing your experience in life of some more difficult times that really feel like the dark night of the soul. And then when it comes through in readings as well, when people maybe need to receive clarity about their greatest challenges that they are going through, in particular, maybe in relationships and maybe home relationships and how ancestral karma is reflected in their current life experience. I think that can be quite revelational in your readings. And it kind of just happens as magic because it's here. You know, with this star algorithm, there is natural ability to diffuse or transmute heavy, dark energies of long-term trauma cycles uh, that go through many, many generations. And there is an ability to face the darkness and stay strong in it and really just through your own soul's light, transmute it into something that can offer wisdom and strength, uh, motivation and inspiration forward using the past difficulties as the blessings is in disguise. So I think that's wonderful that you have that there. I think when I think of Algarab, I think of the underworld. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, going, going deep. Yeah. And that is something too, with my readings that I really am trying to aim towards helping people with those generational ancestral things and healing those. So that's kind of become, I think, more of my focus with my readings that I'm trying to go for that's wonderful to hear and then also having your venus in the eighth house and lilith in the 12th house like the fourth eight and 12 really have such a natural connection that can link to more natural ability to tune into as we said ancestral life stories but also past life stories mm -hmm. and the subconscious stories these can kind of make sure that things like that do come up and there can be a transformation. I just want to remind our viewers that when this chart was pulled through the galacticastrochart.com website, our free calculator that we uh, created for the public, and this is a feature that is available to the students of the Quantum Soul Guidance course, and there is limited amount of stars. We, at the moment, I think have over 60 stars, but there are so many more, and Usually when I see planet that is not showing conjunct alignment, there sometimes all the other practitioners have the same experience. Sometimes this planet comes out and talks to you and like, there is something here, look, look beyond. So I was curious about the moon here because it is kind of ruling the entire chart because your ascendant is in cancer sign, sign cancer is ruled by the moon and your natal moon is in sign of Libra in the fourth house. So it kind of rules the entire chart. Um, so you would most likely be quite driven by the phases of the moon. And maybe in the past lives, you may have even been a priestess in a temple of the moon in, in Greece or something like that. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. That's funny that you say that, uh, Julia, because another astrologer a couple of years ago said the same thing that I, it wasn't a past life reading, but just from looking at my chart, she thought I might have been maybe a high priestess of Venus or Aphrodite. So Ooh. that hearing that just really, <laughs> it just really came, it just came. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, but the star that is conjunct this degree, so 10 degrees of Libra in around, there is two degree orb with this star. It's a star called Porima, double R, Porima, and it's in Virgo constellation at the left elbow of the Virgo of the Virgin, if you look at the mythology of the constellation. And this star is connected to prophecies. In fact, the name Porima came from, from Greek goddess of prophecy. So okay. that can indicate wow. the connection. So seeing that star in your fourth house, conjunct moon, I thought it was 
so fitting to your path of astrologer and tarot reader tuning in especially into past lives that's something that really seems to be calling you and it was one of your questions just before your certification how can you combine this natural curiosity and passion of bringing in the past lives patterns to help your clients understand what yeah. they're experiencing in current life um would you like to talk a little bit about your sessions works out mm -hmm. when you tune into past lives and bring in galactic astrology into the picture as i was doing looking at charts and everything i think it just kind of came naturally for me to use cards because I had been so used to using tarot cards and I've really just strengthened my intuition, my higher self. You know, I just felt like I want to get more details into it as I was looking at the charts. And, you know, there's so many good resources already that are in the course too with the galactic alignments. And I ended up buying the Past Life Oracle deck by I think Doreen Virtue. And those cards are meant specifically more for the Earth past lives, but I've been able to make it work actually with uh, the galactic lives so I can have some sort of an understanding and can really flesh out this is what happened and what you're experiencing. For example, I had a reading where it was communal living, that card came up. So I was able to tell them you lived in a community. It was very much like a family oriented community type of uh, environment here. Because uh, we only have so much understanding, you know, as humans we're trying to understand the galactic lives accessing through the Akashic records. So I just love that I can pull more details with the past life cards and be able to tell them this is what you were experiencing. And by doing so, it kind of explains this is why you may be the way you are now or have certain uh, tendencies for things or gravitate towards certain things. So it really just gives some extra detail, I feel like, when I'm using the cards. Also, at the end of the chart report that I do, so I do a report and a live session, I also will include what you can learn from all this. So it's like you have all this information now. What can you actually learn now from this? What do you need to heal? Because that's what I want the main takeaway to be from, from that reading. Uh, not only that, but also just having those deep confirmations as I experienced myself looking at my own chart and even just hearing you say that earlier about what you were seeing in mind. So I just think it's so important as we are on this human journey. I, yeah, I love the practical guidance element. And I have to say, there is so much magic and power and synchronicity of using tarot cards. I do remember I had many, many client sessions where I felt guided to pull tarot cards for them uh, towards the end of the reading. And if anything, it was always validating to what already came up before. It was just like final uh, confirmation that, yeah, you got this right. This is exactly what the main theme of focus should be in this reading. So there's just, I, I love the magic of universe and of how when we allow universe speak to us through tools that are surrounding us, it can be so educational and uh, so much clarity can come through it. If only we don't dismiss it as just a coincidence or like can't really be like this is just yeah. a, you know if we dismiss the communication of the magical mm -hmm. synchronous universe we, we're losing out so much something i learned is I don't believe in coincidences anymore <laughs> that's good so i recently heard matthias de stefano talking about this how much because he's experiencing this everyday constant communication with the universe but he highlighted the importance of developing an ability to to decide what is relevant which communication is relevant to you and which isn't because if you don't have that filter then it can be really overwhelming and kind of confusing and detouring but uh, there has to be there is usually this um, kind of stronger energy or higher resonance with messages that are really relevant at propelling us through our evolutionary journey and then the rest is just like entertainment uh stuff <laughs> that comes through mm -hmm. just as a sense yeah. of humor. so i really do feel that mm -hmm. the makeup of this creation has a sense of humor like i feel humor is really really natural part yeah. of nature right yeah i do too yeah definitely sometimes you can't 
uh, take life so seriously. And I think uh, the universe will send you signs to remind you that. So with regards to your social media channels, you currently have your YouTube channel and Instagram and Facebook as well, or? Uh, yes, I don't have a Facebook set up yet, um, but I might set up a Facebook page too. But I, yes, I have Starry Sky Readings on uh, YouTube and Instagram. And I just actually added my website now too. So it's on the uh, Galactic Astrology page now. So I will probably be adding more on the website, but it's finally there. <laughs> so yes, I really well done. To is it okay if I show it? Yeah, here it is. Starry Sky Readings, book your reading um, there's a section about you, the offerings that you have here currently are birth chart, astrology reading, galactic soul reading, tarot reading, and past life reading. Really good. What would be the client type that navigates to different types of readings? Can you tell us a little bit more which reading may be more appropriate for different questions or challenges or stages of life? Like they're all so yeah. rich, they all kind of can lead you to the exact answers, like whichever you choose, like you can't choose wrong. It feels like we, with all these choices, but um, how would you comment on that? Yeah, I think so to start with the birth chart reading, I think that's more for anybody that has a curiosity maybe of astrology or even I know people who even have, you know, babies that just want to have a fun little birth chart reading. Uh, I had one actually done of me when I was a baby. So it was kind of cool to look back at that when I got older. Um, but really anybody uh, can go for a birth chart reading if they're kind of trying to find their direction in life or career path, maybe relationships. Like I can look at certain areas of their chart if they don't want a whole uh, chart thing. So I am very flexible and kind of customizable with my readings so and then for tarot reading if it's more of a situational thing i know not everyone gravitates towards the tarot um so if that's something that kind of calls to you and you would enjoy seeing cards getting pulled and it'd be a, a recorded video uh then it kind of gives you more confirmation of what you already know in your subconscious what you already know inside um, but I'm kind of helping nudge you in the right direction I get a lot of my tarot readings are I, I would say for people looking for like a life direction like with their work and things like that kind of just needing that confirmation like am I heading in the right direction or sometimes it's relationships as well and then yeah galactic you know I think that would be more of the Anyone who's open to, yeah, learning about their ancestral past and in the past life reading too. So I have the past life reading is where you can look more at your earth lifetime. And then if you want to go and take it to the next level, we can look at your galactic uh, past lifetime if you're ready for that next step. I love that. People would be surprised how many planets in other star systems have human experiences of societies that resemble the archetypes that we have here on earth so many mm -hmm. stories of let's say um, i remember lyran uh, lady who in lyran lyran planet was very passionate about agriculture and she developed this amazing land where many people were coming to visit and like it was about growing food and plants and creating this beautiful environment that is self-sustaining and then very similar theme she was navigating here on earth a lot of mirroring i'm finding with looking at all these past lives there's a lot of mirroring going on i do believe that whatever we've developed as our niche or ability or through many experiences really grow grown our expertise in other star systems through many incarnations if we come to earth if we were selected <laughs> if we got the ticket then we will likely be focusing on bringing that here. It's not like we come here to learn and develop something new. It feels more like the mm -hmm. higher education or, or well, if you come here on assignment, like and many, many uh, people who navigate towards galactic astrology, they feel like they are here on a mission, on an assignment, and they just want to get clarity on what it really is that they're here to do. Usually they know already, but it's so important some, to get validated through external mm -hmm. source. There's something in us that just keeps doubting, you know, are, are we really here yeah. to do that? Right. Um, yeah. In the chart and through uh, psychic intuitive guidance as well. It's just so liberating and activating, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
like you saw in my chart too it's like it's screaming at me like you're meant to do this kind of work <laughs> yeah you're very aligned with your path yeah. beautiful to see it was all in divine timing that's what i always say so well is there anything else uh, that you would like to share with regards to your readings or anything about your experiences with any of the star connections or your client sessions anything else that you wanted to bring in yeah, um, I did want to add to um, with my readings, I do want to add, I know I already have a lot <laughs> there to offer, but I do really want to get in touch with synastry readings and the galactic alignments. Nice. So kind of funny enough, like what you were seeing with my Venus alignments with the moon and everything, I really have an interest in relationships and uh, of all sorts, you know, and being able to find those connections and being able to read that so that is something that i do want to offer soon as well, well look at this stelium in your seventh house house of relationships yeah. <laughs> so I house is right on there. yeah you're right on point there absolutely and you know all these things it came it can seem like um scattered focus with multiple services but actually they all are intertwined you can actually offer all of it under one umbrella but it's so nice to be able to break it down into more digestible sizes readings many people respond much better to nibble sizes and uh, have like repeating client relationship that can just be mm -hmm. so amazing if you if you do it over a period of a year or two like those are awesome um growth yeah. uh, testimonials so I'm mm -hmm. so excited for you. This feels so good, so right and so aligned. So really well done for the tenacity of the study and the amount of work that you've put into it in the last um, just over a year. Uh, really mm -hmm. proud of you and wishing you best of luck. And it's wonderful to see you online connecting, whether in your own uh, solo videos and podcasts mm -hmm. or in collaboration with Caitlin Pendolino or anyone else that may become a guest on your show. So any parting message um, or word of maybe advice from your own experience going through the Quantum Soul Guidance course, any ups and downs that you've had and what helped you to pull through. And in particular, actually, what I tend to uh, want to ask now is a message for students who feel stuck um, and mm -hmm. I was kind of reflecting on that today, that it's usually the ones that that have a desire to keep studying, 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 but not actually practicing, but you have been practicing really well and it seems to have pulled you through it faster. Would you agree? Just do it. Just <laughs> just put the information in, just get on the, the chart and just make the time to do it and just see, like looking at your own chart is a great stepping stone. But actually, I think personally, look at somebody else's chart because that you don't have that bias of looking at your own chart. So I think that actually is an even better way to start off when you're learning through this. Just make the time to do it and ask somebody, a friend, family, and just start looking and then start piecing all the pieces yeah, of the puzzle together and just see, you know, you're aligned here. Let me find out about this star system and these beings. And then you can go research into that. So I think that's just such a good way to do it. And it all will start to click and fall into place. So I, love that. I, I hope everyone can um, just find what they're looking for out of this and you'll find what works best for you. Beautiful advice. Thank you. I was just thinking about biographies. I love watching biographies, biography movies of any kind of famous person. And immediately the first 10 minutes into a movie, I would find myself finding the chart of the person and watch the movie while I look at the chart. I found awesome. it's always really so enjoyable and so fascinating to see how stories unraveled and how they are written in, the, in astrology. I just love, love this science. Hopefully it'll yeah. re-establish its place where it rightfully should be. There's so much, so much treasure in this modality. So thank you, Adriana, for, for delivering your um, service with such grace and grounded practical frequency. And um, I'm sure channeling a lot of wisdom from your previous incarnations and also leveraging the guidance of the spiritual wise stars that are in your chart. So it's such an honor again and privilege to be able to kind of open a door <laughs> to offer wonderful service uh, to humanity. So best of luck on your journey and may the right people be guided to you who will 
receive an amazing, amazing experience and transformation and grow and evolve into joy and love. Well, thank you, Julia. I'm so grateful to have this opportunity and finding your course and finding you and all your amazing work that I got to look at and dive into. It's my pleasure. And thank you all for watching. And we look forward to seeing you again in the next podcast. Take care. Bye-bye.